Okay, welcome back. Now I'm going to do a demo on uh, thermal conductivity and Newton's law of cooling. It's going to be a good demo. Uh, we're going to have two cups, sty styrofoam cups. I'm going to measure their thickness. And then this styrofoam cup, I have placed it in an aluminum can. And I'm going to put the same amount of water in both of them. And I'm going to ask how long does it take for the temperature of the water to drop from a certain hot temperature to down to a certain cold te colder temperature. Not necessarily the same as room temperature, but some, somewhat colder than what it was. So I'm gonna measure the original temperature of the water, right? So I'm gonna have the styrofoam cup like this. Okay, put the same amount of uh, water in both of them, mass of water, we'll call that M water. I have to measure the thickness of the styrofoam cup like this. So uh, let's fill it up now. Measure the mass of the water. Mass of the water is going to be 101.5 grams. Okay. Then the, I'm going to be measuring uh, the height of that. Well, the height of it is going to be. Uh, equal to now since mine is a styrofoam cup which kind of get the diameter increases a bit what i could do is here's the uh, the level of the water like this okay i could measure the diameter of the midpoint of that water something like the midpoint that'll give me a bit more accurate reading so the midpoint is somewhere about here like this Okay, now let's fill both of the cups with the same amount of water. Okay. Okay, so right now I have both of them same amount of water. The one with the aluminum can, with the styrofoam cup in the aluminum can, and then the other one just the styrofoam cup. Okay. So then I'm going to be putting a thermometer in both of them. So you can see here in the video. This is the original temperature of the water in the cup, 75.4, 75.4 Celsius. I'll run my stopwatch on my phone. So the original temperature was uh, 75.4 Celsius. So I'm going to be assuming that the primary form of heat transfer is through the conduction of heat through the walls of the styrofoam cup, okay? Now there is also a form of heat transfer through the radiation. The water is gonna radiate away its heat through the top, but that's gonna be probably less of a factor, but it will be a factor. The radiation of heat through the top, that's gonna affect our experimental result. I'm gonna be ignoring that. So the heat transfer through the thickness of the cup then in the case of the aluminum, when I have this thing in aluminum, so then it's gonna transfer through the, not only through the, the styrofoam cup, but also through the thickness of the aluminum, right? So I need the conductivity of styrofoam, the conductivity of aluminum, right? So let's write thermal conductivities. So of course, uh, aluminum being a metal conducts a lot more electricity and also it conducts uh, heat a lot more, 205 watts. But I'm hoping that because I've got it in styrofoam, the styrofoam will trump the aluminum and it won't be able to lose heat that much, right? So we have that. We also need the thickness of the styrofoam and the aluminum. So I can measure the thickness of the uh, styrofoam cup. I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume that the thickness of the bottom is the same, although that's also probably not true. The thickness of the styrofoam is, the, we'll call that T, two millimeters. Okay, so now let's do the equations of heat transfer known as Newton's law of cooling. Okay, so the power radiated through the walls, the equation is Ka dt over dx. This is the power conducted through the walls, I should call it. Not radiation, but conduction, right? So it's conducted through the walls. K is the conductivity of the walls, A is the surface area of contact of the water with the walls and with the bottom, right? And the DT is the change in temperature between the inside and the outside, and then DX is the thickness of the walls, right? So then you have here K is going to be equal to the 
Let's just do the conductivity of the styrofoam now. The conductivity of the styrofoam 0.033. The surface area is going to be the surface area of the sides, which is 2 pi times the radius times the height, right? So 2 pi r times the height. That gives you the surface area around the side. And then the surface area at the bottom is going to be pi r squared. Okay? The change in temperature is going to be the inside temperature, which is changing over time, right? The inside temperature minus the outside temperature, which is 26 Celsius, divided by the thickness of the wall, which we call in T. Now let's put in all the numbers, 0.033. My diameter was 6.1, so 2 times the radius is the diameter. 0.19 times Ti minus 26, okay? That power that's radiated is the amount of heat that's going out per unit time, right? So we can call that dQ dt, and that amount of heat that is uh, going out will reduce the temperature of the water. So we can say minus m water c water dt over dt, right? So depending on the mass of the water, the specific heat of the water, change in temperature of the water, over the time that it takes to reduce the temperature of that. So we're going to say minus the mass of the water was 101.5 uh, grams, so change that to kilogram, 0.1015. Okay, that's kilogram, right? Then I'm going to multiply that by the specific heat of water, which is, I'm going to express it in joules per kilogram. 4,184 joules per kilogram, and then a kilogram and kilogram cancels. I could have kept the mass of the water as 101.5 grams, then I could have written here 4.184 joules per gram, either one, as long as the kilogram, kilogram cancel. We have here dt over dt. So then what I'm gonna do, since the temperature of the inside is changing over time, this goes down here, and this goes up there, and this is what gives us Newton's law of cooling. 0.19 dt is equal to negative 0.1015 times 4184 dt over t initial minus 26. Then integrate that. So that means the temperature of the gas drops as a ln function, right? it drops as a natural log. In other words, initially the temperature of the water drops a lot, very fast, then it begins to plateau. As you, reach, as you reach room temperature, the temperature of the gas doesn't drop as fast. So the reason I have the negative here and I put the negative here is because since this side on the left is positive, the change in temperature of the water is negative, right? So I want both sides to be the same sign, both positive. So if the dt is negative, I need an extra negative. That means the power that's flowing out is causing the temperature to drop. So it's not a power that's coming in and causing the temperature to increase. So that's why I put the extra negative. So then my initial temperature is going to be what? My initial temperature was the 75.4. So then I can put here 75.4 minus 26. Okay. So then I can ask, how much time will it take? Right now, what temperature are, are they showing? The cup is temperature, the one that's just a styrofoam cup, the temperature is showing 58.3. So I can say, how much time will it take for their temperature to drop down to 50 Celsius, let's say? Okay, 50 Celsius. So what will that be? Point. So about 27 minutes is the predicted time for the temperature of the water in the styrofoam cup to reach, um, uh, to reach 50 Celsius. So right now I can show you my stopwatch is on 12 minutes. So we've got 27 minutes. So we've gone almost about half of that, 12, 12 and a half minutes. And then the temperature in the water with the styrofoam cup is showing 55.8. So I've got about six more Celsius to go. It, should, it has to cool down to 50 Celsius. So let's see how long that will take. Now the drop in temperature has slowed down. So it's 55.6. But remember, I am ignoring the temperature loss due to the radiation also. And I'm ignoring the fact that the, the, water, the cup in the bottom is probably thinner. 
Okay, so it's probably going to take quicker than 27 minutes. So let's do the calculations for the one that is the aluminum. I need to measure the thickness of the aluminum. So the thickness of the aluminum T2 is 0.1 millimeter. So then what changes about the problem? Well, remember how we started the problem. We said that we have uh, P is equal to KA. This part of the calculations and the equations aren't going to change. The only thing that's going to change is the K, the K of the, of the material. So how do two, uh, these two aluminum and styrofoam are acting as two thermal conductors in series, right? So you got the styrofoam and you got the aluminum next to it, right? So K1, K2. So how do their thicknesses add up? And how do their conductivities add up? Well, when, uh, you see my theory section, I proved to you the, how the conductivities of elements in series add up. We see that we have, okay, so that's how the conductivities of two thermal conductors in series add up. So I've got to do the thickness of the, wall, uh, of the styrofoam, which was 0 0.002 meters, and the conductivity of the styrofoam, 0 0.033, plus the thickness of the aluminum, which is 0 0.001. Okay, now I'm gonna make sure that I I the temperature of the cups. Uh, so then I'm gonna divide that by the conductivity of styrofoam, uh, the conductivity of uh, aluminum, 205, and then now I take the total thickness of both of them, which is three millimeters, and then divide it by the total K, okay? So I do nine. So what does that mean? That means the K total is actually larger than when you had the styrofoam alone, watts per meter Kelvin. So right now it's at 50.1. Okay, right now it's at 50.0. Okay, so let's see here, 50.0. The styrofoam cup one took 19 minutes. Uh, the, the cup and the aluminum took 19 minutes. Okay, and then the other one. Actually, the other one is actually the cooler. It's 49.2, 49.2 Celsius. So probably several things happened it actually cooled down faster, 49.2. So let's just write it down, T, uh, uh, T cup in the 19 minutes, okay, reached all the way down to 49.2 Celsius. So it was actually a bit cooler. So let's do the calculations. Let's see what we get for the time, what we get for the approximate time, how long should the, uh, the cup and the aluminum take, right? So in theory, we had predicted the theoretical, the theoretical for just the cup that was 27 minutes. Let's see what the T theory be with, with the cup and the aluminum, okay? So, so far we've got K total 0.049, okay? So then what else changes in this equation? We already know this is 0.049. Okay, squared, divided by, now what changes is the overall thickness of two of them, right? So now the overall thickness is uh, three millimeters, right? So we put here 0 0.003, whereas the other one we had 0 0.002, right? Then we put the mass of the water, which is the negative uh, 0.1015, right? So then I don't need this number anymore. That's the total K of the styrofoam and the aluminum. I can erase that. Then I'll put multiply this by the specific heat of water, 4184. Then I'll have here DT over DT. Okay, then I need here the temperature initial minus uh, 26 Celsius, okay? Okay, so then the primary things that change, this stays the same, this and this stays the same. So the only thing that changes are these two. So when I multiply that out, I get 0 0.049 divided by 0 0.003. Okay, 
okay? Then I multiply it by uh, pi, then I multiply it by Then I multiply it by 0 0.061 times 0 0.045 plus 0 0.0305 squared. Okay? So I get 0 0.18, 0 0.1885, 0 0.1885. 5869, 5869. Then I get here, the dt goes over there. Then this one stays the same, negative 0.1015, then 4184. Then over here, I get here uh, dt over t minus 26. Then I integrate this again, similar to before. But the other one, the, the cup by itself, the alumina, the styrofoam cup by itself was 26.89 minutes, to be more exact. This one came out to be 27.245 minutes. It's predicting that the, the time for the styrofoam plus aluminum is a little bit longer than the time for the styrofoam cup alone. So even though the conductivity of the uh, aluminum and the styrofoam cup is a higher which makes you think it should lose heat faster but what else is true together combined they're thicker than the styrofoam alone aha uh -huh. very interesting right the the conductivity of aluminum is very high it should have allowed heat to transfer quicker it should have cooled down uh, faster and it should be actually be cooler than the other one. It's actually not. Why? Well, look at the equation. How is the equation determined? You got Ka dt over dx is mw cw dt over dt. What's the major difference? Look at this k over dx, k over dx. The k of the aluminum and the cup is larger, but the dx is larger. This is also larger. So how do we determine the time? When the time goes over here, this goes over there, this goes down here, what happens? T is equal to dx over k, the area goes down, and then you have here mw cw dt over t minus 26 and an integral. Now look at this. mw cw, this, this is all the same. The area doesn't change, so the area is down here. So now look at this factor dx over k. Now if the k goes up, that means it becomes more conducting, you would think the time is quicker, it's shorter. But if this goes up even more, then the, it makes the time longer. So in our case, what happened to the k? See, that's, this is what we got to look at, the ratio of dx over k. You see? 0 0.002 over 0 0.003, is going to be 0 0.0606 and then this ratio 0 0.003 divided by 0 0.049 0 0.061 now notice what's happening even though the denominator is getting bigger right this number is getting bigger which would tend to reduce the time this is also getting bigger in such a way that this ratio is slightly bigger than that you see so that means that even though the aluminum is more conducting, it's still helping the system. It's making it thicker. So if I had a thicker aluminum, that would also be good. I would actually add, uh, I would, that would add to the thickness of the material, right? But you don't want to have the aluminum to be too thick because then its conductivity will dominate the conductivity of the material. So it's a kind of a tricky question. You don't want to have it too thick, but right now, at least for now, it's helping, you see? So it's actually slowing down the temperature loss. So right now the cup alone is uh, 42 Celsius. And then the cup with the styrofoam and the aluminum cup is 42.4 Celsius. 
42.5 Celsius. As they cool, their temperatures will start reaching the same temperature as room temperature slowly. Little by little by little, they will converge. So now you can see a good example of how to do the Newton's law of cooling, how to combine two conductors in series, how to predict how long it takes, and then sometimes this, uh, the prediction might be surprising that actually the aluminum and the styrofoam are actually s cooling s slower than just the styrofoam by itself, okay? Thank you very much.